Join us in today's episode as we run loose around North Carolina. We'll help the stuck get unstuck, swing from the trees, experience cloud tears smashing into our windshield on our way to take our very first ferry ride, finally find our lost dryer socks, then stay tuned as we swing into Mayberry to say hey to Andy Griffith. While here, Jackman becomes Justice of the Peace and Nick gets a beard trim from Floyd the Barber's son with yard tools. Wherever I go, I will always know Everything I need is right here with me It's time to let it all go, no matter who knows Anything about me, no I'm ready to see what life's got for me I got one thing left to say We stayed at Nick's sister's house for a little over a week and so our tanks are full but we just got to North Carolina and we are looking for a state park or an RV park of some sort so we can dump and get water. I doubt we'll stay here at this RV park tonight. We'll see what happens. Looks like nobody's answering the door. It's kind of hard to find in the Carolinas for some reason. So Nick finally found somebody walking around the, the RV park. We're here at Snowcut RV Park in North Carolina and we found out they charge $100 a night, which is way too much for our budget, but they are letting us dump on one of their vacant sites and fill up with water for free. So never hurts to ask guys, just ask around if you pull into a place, see if you can dump. Thank you so much, Snowcut RV Park. Apparently that back in 1920, I believe it was, they cut Snow's Cut to be able to get ships back to the Cape Fear River. So it's not an actual river. It's a man-made canal. Correct. Well, hello. Welcome to the beach. Brett Fremont Park. In North Carolina, you can actually camp out on this beach. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> like I get stuck. This truck did get put back in here, right? Yep. Alright, so we're leaving the beach and two guys were stuck over here in their vehicle. We're gonna Keep give it up, buddy. Bump out. We did actually end up staying at Snowcut RV Park for one night for a trade barter. We loaned our 30 amp cable to the owner in exchange for a discounted spot for the night within our budget. Sometimes everybody wins. Just down the street, we booked a more affordable spot for two nights to take a short relaxing weekend getaway from life on the road. Today we're at Carolina Beach State Park and we're gonna spend two nights here. We got a nice big spot with a trail out the back so we're gonna go take a look at that and see where it leads us. Come on, Jerk. So right out our back door, there's actually a trail. There's over nine miles of hiking trails here. Or I guess they're more or less walking trails. They're all fairly easy. And we are right on the snow cut canal. So I'll show you that, because we haven't got to see that up close yet. The current out here on the canal looks pretty crazy, but there's a nice little sandy beach down here, and we're told there's no gators. So hopefully it's gonna make a nice day. It's a little chilly today, but maybe tomorrow will be a little warmer.
what's up? Welcome to my port in the trees. <laughs> this is very comfortable, by the way. If you've never done a slackline hammock way up in the trees, I highly recommend it. This is one of the coolest parks I've been to on the East Coast. Really enjoy it. Very nice. Nice and quiet and relaxing. Well, it's a beautiful day out here on the ocean. We're gonna go for a hike. They got lots of trails over here, so let's go check it out. This is Sugarloaf Trail. Pretty beautiful. This is the Sugarloaf Overlook. Pretty cool spot. tractor supply heading towards the Outer Banks in North Carolina and we hit a bit of a rainstorm. We're trying to get some propane and they won't fill it till the lightning stop. They said while we wait we can top off our water tanks. We're hoping to get to the Outer Banks probably tomorrow. I think we're a little late in the day today. We have to catch a ferry. So we'll see if we can get out there for you guys tomorrow. We're currently entering the Outer Banks. We were gonna try and catch the ferry over to the island tonight to camp, but I think we missed it, so we're gonna go ahead and try again in the morning and see if we can get this big old rig on a boat to the other side. Many of you might be wondering, what are the Outer Banks? We were too. We hadn't even heard about them until we got to Florida and somebody was talking about how we had to go visit the Outer Banks. Well, it turns out that it's a 200 mile string of barrier islands that separate North Carolina from the southeast border of Virginia. And some of the islands you can drive out on the beach, some of them are little shopping towns, fishing towns. It's a pretty well-known tourist destination over here on the east coast. We're gonna see if we can camp on one of the islands. We're heading to Cape Lookout and we're gonna have to get a permit, I guess, to drive on the beach over there. But we plan on camping for as long as we can, which is typically about four days, so. We'll see how that goes. We'll let you guys know. We'll bring you along. We're going tomorrow. Kind of wanted to have a discussion with you. It's a hundred and thirty-two dollars for all of us, plus the twenty-five dollar permit. It's a little expensive just for staying on the beach. Price went up. Oh, it did. They, they're not only are they charging for the vehicle, they're charging per person. So what would you like to do? I don't know. I booked it, I didn't pay for it. Luckily we heard about another ferry called Swan Quarter, not too far from the Cape Lookout Ferry. It was said to cost only $30 to cross with your vehicle. So we're gonna skip out on uh, Cape Outlook. Cape expensive. Yeah, Cape expensive. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, w it would have been uh, $157 to go to Cape Expensive. We are currently in standby to get on the boat. The 10.30? Yeah, so um, the boat's full, apparently, of reservations, but we're on standby. And uh, the overhead clearance is 13.4, we're 13 foot, so we clear that. And it'll be 30 bucks. She seemed like she was pretty confident we were going to get on. 
Okay. Well, there's a guy with a giant RV and two cars ahead of us, so. Yeah. <laughs> we will see. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so we spent the night uh, over here in the parking lot, and yeah. we decided on the 10:31, thinking it wouldn't be full. And when I went to book an online reservation, they wouldn't let me book anything until tomorrow. So. Oh well. <laughs> so happens when you don't plan things. Yeah. You wing it. So we have been trying to go to the Outer Banks. We're technically in the Outer Banks, experiencing the Outer Banks. And this thing that we're experiencing is fairies, waiting on fairies all day long. You have to make reservations here. If you don't, you're gonna be waiting like we are. So it's gonna be windy tomorrow. So everybody that was on tomorrow's boat that can get on today's boat is trying to get on today's boat because tomorrow's boat's not gonna not going to be running so we were going to try to go to the campsite uh, right over there in Orca Coke it's a really nice day today I don't really feel like sitting and waiting for the ferry all freaking day so what we're thinking about doing is driving all the way around the highway 12 and then just heading south and doing what we can do in our camper without taking any ferries because this is just annoying either that or I'm just going to say sorry no outer banks because <laughs> this is ridiculous i'm feeling some heavy resistance here in my experience when i feel resistance like this i check out <laughs> it doesn't There's a work reason for it, usually. Yeah, yeah exactly so we got a decision to make do we drive four hours and try to see the rest of the outer banks or do we just quit on the whole idea anywho that's where we're at this is unfamiliar territory for us so We've not had this much trouble ever in all of our travels in a year. <laughs> yeah. I didn't sleep well last night, so I'm a little bit cranky this morning. Okay, so 10.20, we are still in line. We're gonna try and see if we can get on this ferry over here to the Outer Banks. There is one guy with reservations in line next to us, and then again, the guy with the RV and the two cars ahead of us on standby. We have seen him. Zillion cars get on. We'll see if we can fit, and if not, we probably won't go to the Outer Banks. From this direction, we may go from another direction, or we may just decide to bypass it at this time, since it's kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, it's 10.33. We've moved forward in line. It appears the guy in front of us got one car on. We're not sure if he's gonna get on, or if there's gonna be room for us today, so. That's our update. I'm sure we'll find out really soon since the ferry's supposed to leave at 10.30. There he goes. Nick's over at the ticket booth, crossing his fingers. We're waiting for a radio call to see if there's space for us. We are next in line. We're a foot too long. One foot. All right, now it. We got time on our side. Okay, was super excited. Yeah, he was. So Nets next boat is at 4:30. You don't have a 1:30? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have a 7:30 either. So this is the only boat, and they're Zit. closed tomorrow. And they're closed tomorrow. So we got two options. We can sit here and wait till 4:30, or we can drive around, which is like a five-hour drive. We're currently at William B. Emstead State Park in North Carolina, and we're stopping to have some lunch, and we're gonna be uh, headed on to Mount Airy. So we were out in the Outer Banks area, and we were trying to, you know, get into the Outer Banks, and it was extremely expensive, and we were, we waited in line forever, and finally, you know what, we threw up our hands and we said, you know what, screw this. This place is not meant for us. So um, I believe if you run into that many roadblocks, it's a sign that you shouldn't go. Turn Just around. turn around, go somewhere else. Make a new place. Don't force it. So anyways, we're heading to Mount Airy now. We're gonna see a little bit of what TV show, Jacqueline? Oh, if actually I'm pretty sure most people probably haven't heard about Mount Airy. Um, it's actually where they filmed Andy Griffith's show. So I grew up watching that. I know a lot of you have too. I did too. And we love that can, show. 
apparently go walk the streets there and see the movie set still pretty much the same. We didn't know it was here until someone told us about it, so we're gonna go check it out and see what we can see. Yeah, so we're looking forward to getting into back into the woods where we can slow down and just chill a little bit. It's kind of crazy on the East Coast, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's been interesting. Thinking after this, we might head towards the Smoky Mountains. So stay in North Carolina for a little bit and then yeah. maybe move west. We haven't decided yet. Yeah, we'll see where we go next. Stay tuned. <laughs> There's the world's largest chest of drawers. Can we stop, please? Sure, baby, whatever you want. We made a quick stop in Greensboro to see the world's largest chest of drawers right here in the furniture capital of the U.S. Welcome to the Andy Griffith Museum. Hey from Mayberry. Today we're in Mount Airy, also known as Mayberry. It's the town where Andy Griffith was born and the Andy Griffith Show is actually based on his hometown here. This city's also known as Granite City because it contains the world's largest open-faced granite quarry just east of town here. So we're going to tour around Mayberry today and pretend like we're in the 1960s. The Andy Griffith Show was filmed from 1960 to 1968, and there's still a lot of memorabilia and locations that they use for filming in this town, so we'll check it out. Time to check out the Andy Griffith Museum. Let's try this one. Okay, so the museum is going to take you through the life and career of Andy. Okay. We talk about everything that Andy Griffith did. You work your way through comedy, Broadway, film, television, of course, lifelong recording career. Oh, let's get your badge on. Oh. We're sheriffs okay. today. Thanks, babe. You're a temporary sheriff. When you pay for the Andy Griffith Museum, you also get entrance to the Siamese Twins Museum where famous twins, the original Siamese Twins, Ng and Chang Bunker, born in 1811. They were actually brought to America to tour on exhibit in a circus. They were conjoined at the liver, married sisters, and had 21 children. So let's go check out their life. <laughs> This is Ng and Chang Bunker. Bunker is their American last name. They were originally born in Siam, which is Thailand today. And they were brought to the US in the 1800s to tour around circus. We're in Mayberry now. We're gonna go see if Andy's working today. Oh, this is Weekend House. Today I'm sharing for these parts. Sarah, give me Deputy Five. Yeah. Come on in, we're open. Oh no, the Darlings were the Oki Outback people. Tend to be sitting here. They're stuttering. I mean, they're moonshine. Moonshine. The mirrors, the cabinetry are the same 
against the bottle, maybe the cash register that we use every day with bought fuel. That was bought fuel March 8th of 1929. The very first cash register in 1929. That little open slot looks like a pop bottle of yeah. it. Well, it prints out a ticket right there with all that information on it. And here we are 92 years later and it still does all of that. And the picture on the door is that. So there's all these pictures you see up here on the wall. There's about 20,000 when they're all up here, and there's about 40,000 more in boxes with nowhere to put. From 1980 to 95, that took approximately 60,000 pictures. Six years ago, this past January the 28th, uh, when Dad paid, I started a Facebook page, and I've already got over 61,000 pictures. Nice. When Dad went like 45 degree angle back and forth, then when he got that done, put it on the smooth side, yeah. and that hones it down, and it just, you know, drives it. Listen, I, I take pictures of our tourists, and now I'd like to get y'all's picture, and she'd get ready to give me a haircut. Oh. I've had a regular barber to cut my hair since the shop and everything shut down a year ago in March. It's been an honor to be able to cut Floyd's son's hair in Floyd's barber shop in the chair that Andy sat in with Floyd. <laughs> You alright here? <laughs> 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 if you're good, you might get a lollipop. We're born and raised in Winter Garden. That's where the hair salon that I work at. Have you ever been down to that area? No, I don't think so. Well, later on, eh, years after the show had ended, uh, Ernest T. Bass came in and Dad cut his hair. When Dad took over the shop in 1980, every governor of North Carolina from 1980 until today has come through here to see Dad. You talk to Dad five minutes and you had a friend for life and he was, 30 years later, you walk in the door and he'd say, hey John, how y'all doing? How does that feel? You're a little bit more off top or? If you take him more off top, I'll It'll have to like buy him. some. Okay. <laughs> There's besides so tight enough? I'll tell you what, now I've, I've always thought I looked pretty good, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Can you add a little bit of pink or purple? Yeah? You, can you put a little pink streak right now? I can. Some unicorn hair. Yeah. Yeah. In the State Board of Barber Examiners, they're made to use these in the shop. I can't use scissors and all that stuff, but I can use these clippers that I have. Okay. And they're special. And <laughs> now remember, he's a teacher, not a barber. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I think those will work fine. His chin's in there pretty deep. <laughs> yeah. And they say they would go right around there. <laughs> and that right kind of wild looking. <laughs> but when you turn these things over, you see it's flat. And so it's perfect for a mustache. I can go <laughs> and <laughs> like that. I've only had one accident and that's pretty good, you know, that is out of pretty two. Good. The guy, this guy <laughs> I was getting ready to start and this guy sneezed and you know when you uh -oh. sneeze your head goes forward. You lose your nose. And so he went, I chew and I went <laughs> <laughs> well, I looked and there was part of his top lip and part of the mustache hanging on it. On my run up street, got a bottle of formaldehyde and put it in it. Formaldehyde. And kept it, and that's been two years ago, and the guy ain't come back to get it yet. <laughs> At least it's preserved well. But, yeah, and the weirdest thing, I found out something, I've heard something that nobody else has ever heard. The sound of one lip talking. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm a retired teacher. I've never cut anybody's hair. But I would like to get a picture. Can I get a picture? Yeah. Of that? If you enjoyed today's episode, hit that like and subscribe and join us next Tuesday. I don't know where we're going. We're going someplace. I do declare this episode is over. For me, you got shot on. We oh, did it in the that's the second time. Shit on the computer. I'm gonna have to work inside. <laughs> <laughs>